In this module, we are going to look at the functions and actions of the muscle tendon complex. To begin, it's important to understand the fundamental principle of the MTC. It can only pull, it cannot push. That is why you have an MTC on both sides of a joint. If you didn't, then you couldn't move a joint in both directions. The force developed in the MTC attempts to bring its two insertion points closer together. Usually, due to a number of factors, only one end of the MTC will move. It's also easier to visualize the MTC pulling one end closer to the other. Even though the MTC can produce force in only one way, it can act as many different special purpose devices. The MTC can act like a motor, a brake, a strut, or a spring. Let's take a look at each of these in a little more detail. In the first case, the MTC produces force, overcomes any resistance, and moves one end closer to the other. In this case, the displacement is going from right to left. If the displacement is from right to left, then the velocity is also from right to left. And we already know that the force is going from right to left. Because the force and the displacement aren't the same direction, the work done by the MTC is positive. If the work done by the MTC is positive, then we know the power is also positive. These are concentric actions. With concentric actions, the work or power is positive, and the MTC is generating energy. Where does that energy go? It goes into the skeletal system. So if we were to trace the flow of energy, it will go from the muscle, through the tendon, and into the skeletal system, increasing its kinetic and or potential energy. In the second case, the MTC produces force, yields to any resistance, and one end moves further away from the other. In this case, the displacement is going from left to right. If the displacement is going from left to right, then so is the velocity. But we already know the force is going from right to left. Because the force and displacement are in opposite directions, the work done by the MTC is negative. If the work is negative, then the power is also negative. These are eccentric actions. With eccentric actions, the work or power is negative and the MTC is absorbing energy. It is acting like a brake. Where does that energy come from? It comes from the skeletal system. So if we were to trace the flow of energy, kinetic and or potential energy will leave the skeletal system, go through the tendon, and ultimately be absorbed by the muscle. In the third case, the MTC produces force, but it is met by an equal and opposite resistance and neither end moves. In this case, the displacement is zero. If the displacement is zero, then the velocity is also zero but we already know the force is going from right to left. Because the displacement is zero, the work done by the MTC is also zero because zero times anything is zero. And if work is zero, then we know the power is also zero. These are isometric actions. With isometric actions, the work or power is zero, and so the MTC is neither generating nor absorbing energy. It is acting like a strut. The MTC may be acting to stabilize a joint, or it could be transferring energy across that joint so the energy moves from one part of the body to another. So far, we've paired the actions of the MTCs with their functions. First, we saw how the MTC acts like a motor during concentric actions. Second, we saw how the MTC acts like a brake during eccentric actions. Third, we saw how the MTC acts like a strut during isometric actions. In the final case, we will see how the MTC acts like a spring when it combines eccentric and concentric actions. Before doing so, we need to discuss in a little more detail how the tendon part of the MTC operates. In this schematic here, we see that the pink and white striations represent muscle and the gray represents tendon. Normally, when we think of the MTC changing its length, we think of that change as occurring by the muscle changing its length. So we see here we have the whole length of the MTC, 
And here we have the length of the muscle. Here we have a change in length of the MTC, which occurs due to a change in length of the muscle. This can and certainly does happen, but it's not the only way it can happen. In this case, the MTC is lengthening once again. So we see here we have the length of the MTC, and here we have the length of the tendon. But look at what happens. In this case, the length change of the MTC is occurring solely due to the length change at the tendon. This can happen as well. And when it does, energy is going into the tendon. This energy can then be released back into the skeletal system rather than going into the muscle. If that was the eye opening, then this should really make you think. In this case, we can look at the length of the MTC, the length of the muscle, and the length of the tendon. We see that we have an overall length change in the MTC. That length change is coming due to a lengthening of the tendon, and the muscle is actually shortening. So we have even a greater lengthening of the tendon. These actions can help explain how the MTC acts like a sprint. Although there are several mechanisms involved, the fact that the tendon length changes can be different than the MTC length changes means that the tendon decouples the MTC length from the changes in the muscle length. And this leads us to the stretch shortening cycle. The stretch shortening cycle occurs whenever there is an eccentric action followed by a concentric action, such as when you do a counter movement before you jump. But not all eccentric actions produce the stretch shortening cycle or do it equally well. To be effective, the stretch shortening cycle involves three factors. First, a well-timed pre-activation of the muscle. Second, a short, rapid eccentric action. And third, an immediate transition from eccentric to a concentric action. This transition is known as the amortization phase. I must stress that to be effective, the amortization phase has to be extremely short. As you can see here, we have a seamless and rapid transition from eccentric to concentric action of the same muscle tendon complex. I don't want to say that there is no work or power being generated or absorbed during the stretch shortening cycle, because there certainly will be. The major point is that, with the stretch shortening cycle, energy is being stored and released in the tendon. The major amount of energy is coming from the skeletal system and returning to it. So if we were to trace the flow of energy, kinetic and or potential energy will leave the skeletal system, go into the tendon, but not make it into the muscle. Rather, it gets returned to the skeletal system. Not all of the energy that goes into the tendon will be released back into the body, but a very large percentage of it can be. But that also depends on the length of the amortization phase. The longer the amortization phase, the more energy gets lost as heat and the less energy returns to kinetic and or potential energy of the body. In this module, we reviewed the four purposes of the MTC and matched those with their actions. We saw how the MTC acts like a motor and generates energy during concentric actions, how it acts like a brake and absorbs energy during eccentric actions, how it acts like a strut and transfers energy during isometric actions, and how it acts like a spring and stores and releases energy during the stretch shortening cycle.